everyone else wants to talk. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, let's put this debate in context. In 2010, we had a, a major election in the country. Uh, the people who uh, were elected in the House made promises to their constituents that if you sent me to Congress, I would try to change the system and deal with the fact that our nation is being run into the ground. We've got more debt than any future generation can ever pay off. Forty cents of every dollar we spend is borrowed money that if you were born today, you inherit about $48,000 of debt that we're spending more uh, on Social Security payments than we collect in taxes. Medicare is underfunded by 30-something trillion dollars over the next uh, 75 years. When you add up all entitlement programs, we're about $50 trillion short of the promises we've made. Uh, it, simply put, the House Republicans who were elected during their campaign said that I believe Congress is out of control we're going to become Greece, and I'd like to do something about it. Well, what did you expect when they got here? That they would just say, okay, I've, I've been taught the real way that the Congress works and it's all okay? They did something about it. Congratulations. Anytime a person running for office fulfills the promises they made to their constituents, they've done, I, I think, a great service to democracy. Cut, cap, and balance is a House effort to reduce spending, not 10 years from now, but this coming year. The problem with all these plans, very sincere efforts in the past to solve our debt problems, Graham Rudman Hollings, the balanced budget agreement of 1997 between President Clinton uh, and the uh, Republicans. I was here then. We achieved balance because we restricted the growth of entitlements like Medicare. We restricted doctor and hospital payments, and we actually balanced the budget for a year or two. Then we found out how much it was hurting doctors and hospitals. We didn't institute real reform. We began to nickel and dime doctors and hospitals, and guess what? We stopped the program, and we spent all the surpluses. How do you get $14 trillion plus in debt? Both parties are working together. This has been a bipartisan effort for about 30 years to run the country in the ground, and I just like to break. I like to have a bipartisan effort to save the country from becoming Greece, and the only way you can do that is put ideas on the table. Please, to my Democratic colleagues, let this debate go forward. If this is not worth debating, what would be? How do you save the country from becoming a debtor nation to the point that the next generation can inherit the American dream? If you've got a better plan than cut, cap, and balance, please show it to us. We're willing to raise the debt limit, but we're not going to do it without changing the reason we got in debt. The cut part reduces spending in 2012 by $100 billion. That will cause some, some pain, but eminently doable. It's about 3 or 4% of the federal budget. I think most people at home believe they can cut their budget 3 or 4% if they had to to save their family, they would. We're talking about saving the country. The cap is an effort to control spending over 10 years to wipe out the $1.4 trillion deficit. We're going to become Greece because we're going to have 100% of debt to GDP in about the next 20 years, and a trillion plus deficit has to be changed, and you can't do it overnight, but you should be able to do it over 10 years. And the centerpiece of the House legislation is the balanced budget amendment of the Constitution. What rational person really believes that Republicans on this side and Democrats on that side are ever going to find a way to fix our nation's problems without something new happening? The senator has consumed four minutes. Thank you. After 40 years, the evidence is in. The Congress is broken, and unless you change the system fundamentally, we're going to run our nation into the ground. So I support a balanced budget amendment, and here's the way it works. You've got to get two-thirds in the Senate and the House, and three-fourths of the state have to ratify the balanced budget amendment. Give the people of America a chance to have their say. Let's pass a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution before we take the country and put it in a situation beyond redemption. And the only thing that's ever going to change this body, I'm sad to say, is some discipline imposed by the Constitution itself. So I promise my colleagues to work with you where I can, but for the rest of my time in the Senate, and I don't know how long it's going to be, I'm going to push a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution because I don't trust the Congress to do the hard things on their own. And when I say that, I mean Republicans too. I yield.